I was in prison for 24 years, wrongfully. 29 years and like eight months. Nine years, five months, and 24 days. 27 years. 15 years. 18 years. 27. 10,000 days. For nothing. Our criminal justice system is supposed to be the best in the world? Nonsense. What the hell does that mean? Like, I'm probably the angriest woman on the earth because of what I know and my intimate knowledge of the people who've been wrongly convicted. There's lots of bad convictions out there. You get police officers that misbehave, you get prosecutors that misbehave, and you get lawyers that don't do their job because there's so many cases coming down the pike. Justice gets lost in the process. The reason wrongful convictions occur is a detective on the case is given a name, and that's all she wrote for that person. Our typical clients have been uh, languishing in prison anywhere between 10 and 30 years. He's walking to work, and he gets taken into custody, and he's been in jail ever since. That was the end of his life. He's living with this woman and their three children. And he goes to, he's on his way to work. He's never been back. With every single one of our clients, it was fair for them to speak to our folks. But immediately, it, was, it should have been very evident to them that they had the wrong person. But rather than move on, they stuck with that person because that was an easier path. They knew that I was not that person. There was no point in going after another suspect. And so they brought me into the system. No motive, no ballistics, no DNA, no weapon, no confession, no fingerprint. Nothing connected me with the exception of two snitch witnesses. They planted evidence. They withheld evidence. They literally paid people, coerced people, and threatened people in them to lie. The prosecutor told him, said, listen, if you say that's the guy, you're facing 11 years. I'm the prosecutor in your upcoming case in court and I can guarantee you won't do the 11 years if you just say that's the guy that shot you. The prosecutor took my picture out of his pocket and he said, this is Richard Miles. He's gonna be sitting next to his lawyer. When you go in, I'm gonna ask you, do you see the person that did the shooting? Just point to Miles. I had a three-day trial and I was convicted in less than an hour. It's all about putting it, putting, putting it in the wind column, you know? Don't, don't think about it too much. Your job is to get a conviction End of story. We've been the last hope for a lot of these men and women. These are inmates who have been through the entire court system. Their appeals have been heard, their post-conviction relief petitions have been heard, and they have nowhere else to turn. When we take on these old cases, what we're looking for is new evidence um, that is described legally as evidence not available at the time of the trial. Most of the cases we take on are field investigation cases. and. Therefore, that means they're going to take longer than a DNA case because judges are very comfortable reversing the conviction of a case where science says this person is innocent. It becomes much more difficult when they don't have that hinge to hang on. And you have to really pull the case apart and reconstruct it. And that's what Centurion does. Centurion went back and they discovered, they looked at all the records and all the files and investigated and found all the information that was hidden from, uh, from the courts. They give you the word that they're gonna work on your case and they'll, till they get you out. And they're not gonna leave no stone unturned. Now had all that information been presented in the initial trial, I would have, not, I would have never gone to prison. When I was sentenced, I had two infant children. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but when I was sentenced, I had two infant children, and my wife was pregnant with my third son. And the day I walked out of jail, my kids were 29 and 28. And his district attorney said, well, good luck with that. I went in, my daughter was nine, she was 21 when I come out with the baby. I had a stepson. 
that took a 38 and blowed his brains out while I was in prison and couldn't come home to see him laid to rest. I, I ceased to exist as a person once the handcuffs was put on me. Richard Miles, he died and 728716, that was the number I had to go by. That's who lived for those 15 years. What do you do in prison? You do time. That's what you do. Everything is the same thing. Every day is the same day. Every day is a mirror reflected image of the day before. You're in a, a box of nothing but space and time with another human being in a lot of uh, instances and you don't always get along. You don't say good morning to your cellar because that shows weakness. The people who I depended on so much had began to fade away. Because there was times when my mother would leave the visiting room and I would say, this is the last time I'm gonna see her. I'm not waking up another day in this place. I'm done. I'm done. Well, he's in the county jail. It's an awful place. Um, county jail is worse than prison. After looking at his case, we realized that he was an innocent man. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to bring him home to you all. Families, I mean, they're, the incarcerated person is the obvious reason for doing this, but the families, they're what, you know, you sort of keep in your head the whole time, especially when the parents are old. There's a worry about getting them home in time so that they can have some years together. I mean, this man has been fighting, you know, for his freedom, literally, for 26 years. Every day she's praying and saying that she wants him to be free. She wants him to come out because she knows for sure that he didn't do what they're saying. But Just knowing that he didn't belong there, you know, that's what keeps, you know, keeps the anger going and keeps the fight going harder. We feel this nipping at our heels, you know. This is the stuff that keeps me up at night is knowing that the, there are these people in prison and we're it. We're the end of the line. And, you know, we, we take that responsibility very seriously, very seriously. When you meet these folks, you can't help but think, holy mackerel, that could have been my son, my brother, my father, my sister, my mother. It never occurs to anybody that these guys would be that ordinary. And that's what, in a way, makes them extraordinary. <laughs>